Hi and welcome to SallyHughesBeauty.com. I am so excited to return to the In the Bathroom With series um, and who better to kick off with than Charlotte Tilbury. Charlotte Tilbury is probably the most world-renowned makeup artist and I'm now, <laughs> and now <laughs> is the proprietor of her own makeup brand so she's crossed that kind of Rubicon into having her own makeup brand which is really exciting. Um, she is also absolutely obsessed with beauty so she's the perfect subject and we're in her house here in um, Notting Hill. Thanks for having us so much. Well, thank you for coming and seeing me in my, yeah, in my little boudoir. But I normally this door is a little firmly locked and no one, this is where the makeup comes off and then the makeup goes on. I am into it, locked bathrooms yeah, for you. Totally. Totally yeah. into a locked door. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. no one's ever seen me without my makeup on. Well, I mean occasionally I think my nanny away. I absolutely some. insist on coming back to this because I want to know about this definitely. <laughs> but I am big into locked bathroom doors. Yeah. I am not would you shave your legs in front of a man? No. No, me neither. No. No. All of that one has to just appear looking glorious and heavenly yeah. and that just none of that ever happens. Yeah, one has no bodily functions <laughs> no. whatsoever. No, one exactly. is just a goddess. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the old goddess. So this is like your little shrine. Your yeah, little, little haven. haven. Haven I get away and when I can just lock the door and the kind of the face can come off and I can get in that bath and I can just deep soak all the kind of, you know, pressures away. So and you're diptyque mad. You've got loads of diptyque here, I can yes, see. Yes, I do. Well, I love a candle. Um, you know, I love, a, I love a candle, I love a bit of oil. I love my Kerastase hair products because I have... A no, you know, very annoying hair where it's just kind of, it's fine, but a lot of it, and my hair gets really bored, you know, all the time of products, so, so it's very um, promiscuous hair. <laughs> so I have to constantly, but Kara's stuff. Slag hair. Yeah, slag hair. <laughs> Actually, that's true. I always try and make it look a bit like that. <laughs> like, what is that kind of like ruffled bit at the back? You know, like, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, like Lady Bunny, with the kind of you know, like looking a bit like I've been like just taking yeah. a tumble. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, but anyway, so it constantly I'm using sort of either go between all the Kerastase different products. So I'm kind of bit slightly obsessed by their products and the and the hair oil, and I can't put too much heat, and I've got to put a certain you know. But I'm anyway. It's all about the hair with me. I suppose I can never. It is all about the hair because I I think you know certain people have their beauty trademarks mm. and with you if you close your eyes and imagine Charlotte Tilbury if you imagine your work I always think sexy that's kind of your work yes, is very totally sexy. Sexy. Yes, sexy I like women to look gorgeous yeah kind of it's goddess like, yeah. like and when I think of you I think eyes and hair yeah, there's a, there's a, yeah. yeah, I think you are literally yeah. like exactly like everyone else. I could never get away with anything because of the red hair. And everyone always says, I want Charlotte Tilbury eyes. And that's kind of what's happened with the brand in a way. I mean, they kind of do want either the kind of glowing skin or the the eyes. It's sort of, you know, that it's... Because I think in a way, you know, I, I don't know if I ever told you about that story. It was hilarious, actually. It was between um, Stella McCartney and Kate Moss. I'd gone to do Stella makeup and um what was I doing I was, thinking I was doing her fashion show or something and then in London and then she, I'd done her makeup and she was going to do an ad fab thing with Kate and she walked in and Kate had the BBC makeup artist do her makeup and she and she, <laughs> and she walked in and she went you've got a Charlotte Tilbury eye and I've got a BBC eye <laughs> and she was <laughs> she hadn't told because she wanted me to it's, it's go and do her makeup that's it's a sexy feline thing isn't it that people are so, almost like an Egyptian sort of <laughs> yeah exactly that feline thing because yeah. I'm obsessed by you know if you look at cats kind of or you know any of those panthers tigers you know even naughty pussy cats they've just got the most incredible eyes and it is that feline shape and they're kind of always mesmeric and they're kind of very deep sort of intensity of colour around them that makes the blue eyes pop and the green eyes pop and everything look really amazing. So, you know, even when you think of celebrities actually quite a lot, quite a lot some of them have like, Jennifer Lopez has really big irises, a lot of them have that kind of very cat-like mm. quality. Mm. Um, but I believe you can make anyone's eyes gorgeous, I do, and that's why the kind of comedians which you so kindly wrote about. Yeah, no, those cranes are amazing. Yeah, um, I, know, I, know, I have a whole pot full over here. Don't get them. Um, exactly, I literally, I, these are these are my like, okay, so if the milkman, well he doesn't come to the door milkman anymore, but the postman, and I literally have had a night where the eye makeup might have come off. I literally, this is my like, oh my God, the doorbell's ringing, what am I gonna do? I have to go and answer <laughs> it, Christ! And then I literally get a colour chameleon and I'm like this. Quick, go to the Would you, you totally this is my, do this that is my, as a postman? Oh, totally. There's no way no one can, anyone can see me without makeup, darling. So if I have to answer the door, God forbid someone might see me. So I literally grab a colour chameleon and put some, you know, shove a tiny bit of mascara and it's my two minute go to smudge, look a bit rock and roll yeah, in the morning. Yeah, I've been wearing them loads. 
because I yeah. really, I mean, I really like to wear loads of makeup and I really love to wear yeah. loads of eyeshadows. But if I'm really, really rushing and I'm I need just to so do, obsessed with these colours. If yeah. I need Which to one do you? Oh, well, I've, I use about four on rotation. Okay, so this is one I'm wearing today, the Amethyst. Yeah. And, and I also is, yeah. love this. Yeah. See, this is the thing that I wrote about these. Oh, are you wearing it's champagne diamonds today? No, which one? No, you this one. Oh, you're wearing. Oh yes. Oh yes. Sorry, you're wearing amethyst as The thing yeah. that I wrote about these that I really, really, really believe in is that they absolutely do make the colour of your eyes pop, pop out when they're designed to go for your eyes. But even when they're designed for other colour eyes, they still look. They, no, 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 darling. Like, I've been wearing all the wrong colours because they still look brilliant. Exactly, because the thing yeah. is, they are the most super flattering. I mean, they're like yeah. a really flattering, gorgeous shade of colours like this. Champagne diamonds, it's like any kind of self deserving yeah, yeah, yeah. chicky kind yeah. of. And the thing is, they don't smudge and they can, yeah. you can work them. They smudge yeah. in the best way and then they smudge when you've. Finished. Exactly, so yeah. you can sort of stay out till 8 o'clock in the morning and still look fabulous yeah. at a Christmas party. If anything, it looks better with <laughs> yeah. a warning. Exactly. Wine, doesn't it? <laughs> but they don't really, you know what I mean? You never end up with that look, you know, yeah, down yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah, so you literally you can stay up all night and look fabulous with the yeah. colour of me. No, I absolutely love them. So those are kind of my, oh my god, you know, the milkman's at the door and I've got to look fabulous. Those are kind of my go-to kind of product of like literally have to have them on hand. I need to know. Because I have spray down if someone... I need to know though why you do this because anybody watching this would think that's a beautiful woman, amazing bones. I was saying to your sister earlier, you've all got like amazing bones, you've got sort of fabulous red hair and all of that. What is it? about you that needs to be seen in the makeup at all times? Because I like to basically, I think I, that I look more, it's the better version, it's the best version of me. And I want to look like the best version of me all the time. I don't want someone to go, mm, she's a bit, you know, like just not have that fabulous mode. And I know that with the kind of the eye makeup on, the green eyes pop a lot more than they are, they do normally. Without the eye makeup, they're a little sludgy gray not as green and with the whole so the whole thing I want to kind of have as much wow factor as I possibly can have on a daily basis even if it's with the milkman right okay so I don't want to have like right laugh sorry that you know I'm not that he's going wow anyway but you know what I mean I'm I feel a bit wow about myself and yeah, so yeah, you know yeah. what why not I want to feel yeah. kind of fabulous and it just gives me and I know that I look in the mirror and I just think, you know what, look good, do that whole charity, look good, feel better. I look in the mirror, I feel better. Yeah. Therefore, I'm a bit chirpier maybe when I answer the door. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I feel a bit more fabulous, I feel a bit more confident. And I know that it's the best version of me. I do know that. I do know that without it, okay, I might not turn into Quasimodo. But the fact is, is I know that I look, you know, a little bit more gorgeous like that. And so I want to feel gorgeous all the time. <laughs> Also, there's something to do with having your game face on in yeah. terms of how you act, I think. like I was explaining to yeah. someone the other day that I could never go to a meeting in flat shoes. It's not possible for no. me. It's I like couldn't do it because I wouldn't be able to yeah. act the way I need to act in a meeting. I need heels, I'm short, I like it really powers. It makes well. you feel yeah. empowered. Exactly. So is it a similar effect? That totally. I like to the same way about heels like you do about heels. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, heels and makeup, I feel, you know, I'm an addict. Self-confessed addict. Because <laughs> they do make me feel empowered. Like you, I feel sort of like you stand differently. In fact, who was it? Tom Paul told me that when you put heels on as a woman you go into the mating position so you immediately stick your chest out and your bottom out and apparently it's what monkeys do and it's sort of that and it makes them it makes them much more attractive to the male monkeys so i don't know if it's that but it's nothing to do with the mating thing but it, but anyway i much prefer you stand very differently you have a much better posture with heels presumably if you were just out with the girls and you weren't going to see any men you would still do the same thing right uh, it would be gorgeous, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's all about, you know, I mean, that's, I'm just talking about that yeah, being yeah, the mating yeah. thing. I mean, you know, heels, I just have to wear heels because A, I don't do any exercise and high heels are just basically my regime. <laughs> that's all I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. exactly. No, and so you're, anyway, so you don't you, no, they give you a great ass because it's like yeah. you could have, you know, standing on your heels all day. It's, you know, it's definitely it's my only regime anyway. And um, were you always like this? Were you always obsessed with glamour? And always obsessed. Sexiness and gloss and gorgeous. Well, yeah, always. I mean, my, you know, my, my um, posters in my room when I was younger, you know, would be covered with sort of, you know, Marilyn Monroe, Greta Garb, but all the kind of, you know, silver screen sirens of the past. That kind of glamour and that beauty. And I used to study their eyelashes and study their faces and study their bone structure and study their lips and study, you know, just literally be studying the eyelash count and the shape. And going, why are her eyes that shit? And what is it about the makeup? And what is it? And I'd study for ages, and that's what. And so I, in a way, as a makeup artist, you can take a little bit of that face and morph it onto another face. 
you know, a little bit like, and you can't, and I've done it, I've done, you know, with people I've done it, I've even said to people, you know, from having done Kate's face for so many years, you know, you kind of go, okay, I'm going to morph a little bit of that onto another face, where you can bring out the cheekbones and widen the eyes, or how do you, but you do, you can morph it. What age did you start putting makeup on your own face? Um, okay, so I went to Pauline Scott and discovered makeup really properly at 13, I and mean, I would mess around with it a lot more before then. But really, when I went to boarding school, I discovered, and I, you know, all the English girls were putting on makeup, and I thought, yeah, and I started wearing mascara all the time. And I went back to Ibiza, and I started wearing, and, and, and all these people from the age of seven to seventy years old literally came up to me and they're like, "Hi, wow, you look different. Oh my God!" And some people were more vocal about it. Some people were like, "Oh my God, you know." Um, they just they just reacted to me. I suddenly felt a bit more popular, a bit more fabulous, and they were a little bit more upbeat and interested. And then the other ones were a bit more like. You weren't that attractive before, but you're really attractive, attractive now. now. And they're like, you've changed, you've matured. You've grown up, you're thinking it's three months, okay? yeah. and it's a pot of mascara, yeah. that's what it's called, yeah. and some eyeliner. And, but it had that much of a radical effect because I've got red hair, because I've got quite fair eyelashes, so it had, it was immensely, you know, immensely morphing, it was immensely different. So, um, yeah, people react to me, and that's when I realised the power of it. And I was, I was a little bit, at the beginning you were a bit like, really, what you're going to just, you're suddenly going to treat like a different person just because I look this way? And then you think, you know what, secret weapon, run with it, I'm not going to change it. And, you know, I, I, and then, you know, and I've always been, I'd always been fascinated by kind of the power of beauty and a woman walking into a room and, and how much they could hold over a room. Mm. And, you know, and, and in a way, so I just thought, well, it's okay, it's my secret weapon, I've always been artistic. And then, and then I met makeup artists when I was there. I mean, I met Mary Greenwell when I was 11 on the beach with my parents. And she was doing all the Vogue covers at the time. And I thought, oh God, you know, she was explaining, oh, I've done this, I've done that. And I was thinking, oh wow, how amazing. Um, you know, I, I didn't even, I know what a makeup artist did in those days, but my father being a painter. Mm -hmm. And uh, was your mother glamorous? Yes, she was very glamorous, very, very glamorous. In fact, I don't have any pictures of her in here, but you know, um, she has, you know, blonde hair and kind of red lipstick. She always wore red lips, always very glamorous, always wore heels, always kind of fabulous outfits. Um, yeah, she's great for my mother. It's a real trip. But so she, yes, and she always said, you know, darling, you know, one must keep up standards and so standards is appearances and, you know, just, you know, feel fabulous every single day. You know, even though she was hilarious. I mean, her heels would be, she'd be up sort of dirt tracks in Ibiza with kind of like, you know, scuffed red heels, like still kind of, you know, but I'm saying, I'm refusing to back down. Refusing to back down to a flat. Yeah. Yeah. So you met Mary. Yeah. And you suddenly had a concept of the fact that this job even existed, right? That this fascination and obsession of yours was a thing, was a thing you could earn money from and do every day and have the time for your life. I think it was, I mean, yeah, it was something with an obsession at boarding school and kind of, you know, really being able to take uh, women and sort of, I'd see them and I'd be frustrated, I'd, be, I'd see them maybe have a big plan and a kilt on or whatever, and I'd think, okay, ditch the kilt. And, you know, ditch the kilt, ditch the plaid. And you know, let me put that kind of makeup on, and these colours would suit you, and this would look great on your body. And suddenly they would become, you know, you, it was like, how do you maximise the kind of someone's, um, oh God, what I always say, I always say, what the fuck, assets. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. <laughs> um, exactly. Uh, to, you know, how to maximise someone's assets. And in a way, that's kind of what I do with makeup. It's, you know, it's the same thing of like looking at someone's face, and why I ended up creating the brand, actually, so much of it is about. As a makeup artist, you look at someone's face and you dial it down, you do it intuitively. So you go, you know, like for instance with myself, you go, okay, green eyes, red hair, cheap, blah, 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 and you kind of see where the pluses and the minuses are, and you kind of add it up and you think, okay, so this is what we accentuate about the face and this is how we go about doing it. So what I want, what people always, always say to me, you know, what colours do I choose? What do I use? How do I do it? I don't know. And I just got so, not sick of it in the end, I kind of needed it for myself because yeah. I would have seven suitcases of makeup and constantly be mixing things for clients, never to quite totally satisfied with, there weren't like, you know, film stuff on some globe, in fact, talking of this product here. Yeah, no, was, I love that. I know, I'm like obsessed by this, but this, but this would be like me mixing about five million different things and still not getting it right, and buffing it in, and then it would be too gray, or it would be too orange, or it would be too, and too, too gold, and not right, and too heavy, and too talky, and it was like, 
oh god, you know, it just so I could never even attempt to try and do or spend the time that I would do on my clients mixing things. I wanted something that was foolproof, easy to use, and easy to choose. So you could come to a counter and you could be like, right, okay, I want film star killer cheekbones. Well, here you go. Here's the brush. Now, this is actually I stole out of my father's studio. This paintbrush. Um, and it paint was brushes, yeah, paint, really, yeah, yeah makeup really good makeup brushes. Exactly. And yeah. it was like I wanted to be able to get the hollows of the cheeks, like follow the hollow, like suck in, and then you just and you just paint it, and the brush does all the work for you. A bit like. You know, I wanted a bit, you know, a bit like sort of my four-year-old son, like his sort of what kind of magic brush that could sort of do all the work for you, and you've not much skill set. So, you know, um, I stole the brush, came up with these amazing formulas, worked with the best labs in the world to kind of create the kind of most beautiful powders. I mean, that was something that was sacrosanct to me actually when I was creating this brand is that really formula is king. Formula is king yeah, over, really over, is. over packaging, over anything, over marketing, over anything. Formula is king, and you know because and if it, it can go in sexy packaging when if it can go in sexy packaging, then I'm the happiest yeah. girl in the world because yeah, it's obviously dream. it's the dream. Yeah. yeah, but that over anything, yeah, totally you know, I'd rather starve yeah. than have that. I mean, that it's yeah. just you know because ultimately, um, I felt that there was a need for what I needed, and it was that for sort of frustration of just sort of wanting. You know, it's so sweet actually since I've done this brand. Um, and all you know, a lot of my fellow uh, makeup artists are like, you know, you're just it's all very gorgeous, you're the woman that does gorgeous, and it's kind of it's you know, it's, it is for real women, you know, it's also for makeup artists, but it's just about sort of you know, having that wardrobe of looks in which look here, okay. So, this is what I've finally done for myself, okay. okay? So, when I'm going out, I literally grab, okay, so I'll say to myself, okay, what's in here? What's in there? I go, okay, Dolce Vita. So instead of like, what I used to do is kind of change up my makeup bags all the time. So that's the Dolce Vita look, right? Yeah, it's really bloody annoying when you get on the train or you're in a cab or something. Yeah. And you realise you haven't got that lipstick that you felt like wearing and you haven't got that. And, this, and, and also, exactly, you haven't got that and you haven't, and I've also got no time. I yeah. literally have zero time. So I'm normally one of those girls that's like, running back from work, from a photo shoot, quick, grab the outfit, do it up, yeah. grab the makeup bag and do the makeup in the cab yeah, on the I way to the event. Yeah. So literally, I'm like, okay, so I've got wardrobe, so because I because I actually, this is how I actually sell it, so I sell it like all the different looks. So this, look, yeah. yeah, so look, so for instance, in here I've got, um, I've got the bombshell, so for instance, that's very you yeah, darling actually. Um, so you know, so th so that it's all in there. Everything is in there. So you just basically grab it, and I just basically, and then you know, literally swap it out. Oh, tonight okay, I'm let me wearing see one of these. Yes. So, okay, this is bombshell. Bombshell, yeah? that's yours exactly. Yeah. Okay, so you've got the picture of the look. Okay, you've, you've got, got some red action. Okay, these so by the way, so yes. brilliant the lip cheats. Really, really, really. They're good. great, aren't they? Yeah. Lip cheats. Yeah, brilliant. I kind of pillow talk. I'm a, I, I mean, I don't know if you've back the nude. Here, but the nude. Amazing. Yeah. There's yeah. iconic nude, and then there's pillow talk, which is like a pinkier one. The, this, the, is a, this is pillow talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one I've been this wearing. This is pillow talk. I've yeah. been wearing that loads. But That's also, what I'm there's wearing. There's a kind now. of corally one I really like. As oh, well. the coral, Coachella yeah. coral. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, okay, so you've got red. You've got a red. So, like for instance, in here, so I've got my this this one, the Dolce Vita. Which is the look I've got on now. Yeah. Okay, so I've got this is the lipstick that I've got on. You like a nude lip on you, don't you? I do. Yeah. I do. I do sometimes actually wear it more of a matte than I'll wear a stain. These are my, um, these are, and I'm slightly obsessed with these. Do you know about my six shades of love? Yeah, and uh, see, blush is my favourite thing. I can't go anywhere without it. I literally would not That's go right. anywhere without blush. It would make me mental. First love, love glow, love is a drug, ecstasy, sex on fire, and the climax. <laughs> so, okay. that, so those are my six shades of love. Um, but and then, why have you made them dual toned? Okay, so I've made them dual toned because. Okay, so where's my blush? Um, I'm, I'm slightly obsessed by these. So, for instance, um, you basically a lot of people don't know how to put on blush. They don't know where to put it, and they also make they get slightly have a tendency to look like Aunt Sally. Yeah. So basically, I made it so that you could swish and then pop. And then literally you swish and then pop and then swish and then pop and they're very finely milled so they're incredible so a lot so a lot of blushes have too much talc in them so they grab too much colour so you end up yeah, looking yeah. a little and bit patchy patchy and yeah. patchy and quite um too much pigment in one area and then you mm -hmm. look a bit you go outside and you blend it in and you look a bit no plate yeah out, exactly yeah. and whereas this is very finely milled so it's incredibly subtle so it looks like more like you're illuminated from within. And it also has a very fine gold pearl in it, which gives it this kind of gorgeous, 
hue of illumination rather than so with between the finely milled powder and the and the gold hue they never look like that Aunt oh. Sally stuck on thing and they're very and also the kind of you know this sort of like first love you look at that and you think Oh, quite boring. It's such a flattering colour. That tawny, neutral blush. Sexy I can't too. tell you. I can't tell you how flattering and pretty it looks. People don't look like they're wearing blusher. They just look healthy and gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. And a bit pretty. They're and nice and big too. Yes, exactly. I'm getting a lot of bang for your buck. Did you ever think when you were? So and also, I'm so obsessed. Like, the reason I'm obsessed with blusher is the fact is, is that, you know what? I mean, they let's sit down. Don't um, but you know, the reason I am obsessed with blusher is because these, you know. When you are feeling a little bit kind of exhausted, especially at this time of year, exhausted, pale, tired, grey, you really need blusher. Yeah, in, the, in the summer you can get away with less, but I tell you what, this time of year it's the only thing that makes you look happy and healthy. Yeah, perky. So you're this little girl who's totally obsessed with makeup and faces and glamour and then you realise this is an actual job you can do and you can go and do it every day potentially and earn some money and all of that. So what happens then? Do you take a course? Yeah, so then I go. I went to Glaucarossi School of Makeup at the age of 18 and then I phoned up Mary Greenwell, who I'd met on the beach at 13 and, um, well actually I was a bit shy, I can't That's believe sassy. it. That's sassy, what did you say? Yeah, well exactly, well I didn't actually call her up, my mother called her up and said, you know that Charlotte really, you're like, Charlotte's totally inspired by you and really would love to come and assist you. And she went, well Charlotte should really be calling herself. <laughs> Exactly. I was like, I'm there. too scared. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, anyway, so um, she was right. And anyway, so then I went to assist her backstage at all the shows, and I started assisting in 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 New York and in Paris and in Milan and here. And it was just the tail end of the supermodel era. Yeah. So I got to stand in a room. And she was with very much. The she was the main supermodel makeup yeah. artist. And it was quite, I mean, it was just so extraordinary, the glamour in those days. I mean, there's kind of six foot Amazonians and the glamour. And in those days, they'd be in the bejeweled and the heels and the bags and the furs yeah. and the crazy. It was like, it was so kind of, you know, the champagne backstage. It was, it was you know, very different to how it is now, actually. It was actually. big, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very yeah. big and it was very glamorous. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and you really did feel, I mean, I definitely felt quite diminutive and quite like, Oh my god, it was just like being around sort of life size, yeah. you know, sort of beauty icon. It just, it was just They were sort of superhuman. Superhuman, they, they yeah. were. They were yeah. kind of like, you know, these sort of legs that went on boobs and shoulders and eyes and hair. It was like, yeah, it was amazing. It's interesting. I was interviewing um, Tishana last year and she was saying how um, amazing it was back in those days that they were all a size 10. Yeah. They were like they are big, healthy, yeah. Amazon, yeah. kind of gorgeous women. Yeah. And it's they, they were so much bigger, if you could ever say that because they were so slim, but they were so much bigger than models now. I think so that's much. a shame. I it is a shame. I think it's a shame. I think it's... I don't like how skinny the girls are now. I think yeah. they look like prepubescent boys. I'm sorry, I'm just going to yeah. say it. I just yeah, think you must miss those. It's though. like, I do. I like boobs and hips and curves. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm kind of like, let's celebrate being a woman. Yeah, I mean, you know, like fucking Chris, well, <laughs> yeah. Cindy Crawford's body. Ridiculous. Oh, all of it? them. And Chris Italian's yeah. body yeah. and Tony Schiffer's body. And I mean, all of them are just, yeah. you know, so stunning. And, yeah. you know, Linda, I mean, all of them are just amazing. But um, Helena Christensen, gorgeous yeah. body. Yeah, wow. Um, but, yeah, I do. I think now, I think, you know, it's not a trend. It's a trend for no hips, no boobs. Yeah. No, you know, um, I mean, I, fashion's always kind of been anti-boobs, but, um, you know, I'm probably one of the sort of people that turns out with a great cleavage most yeah. days. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're in the middle of this complete and utter fabulousness. Are you still sort of, is your eye on the prize? Are you even conceiving of the idea that one day you might have your own brand, one day you might be massive in your own right? I think I was always, if I'm really honest, I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say, you know, I was actually a very, very directed child. I mean, very kind of from a very early age, I was like, I want to do something, I want to do something creative, but I want to kind of make my mark, I want to, yeah. you know, it wasn't, I'm not just sitting here going, oh, I created a yeah. brand, because I just thought, oh, I did make one, it's really great, and look, you know, I've worked bloody hard for what I have, yeah. and I've been very determined, I'm very focused, and it's incredibly difficult as a creative person to get something off the ground, yeah. to, to create a brand, it's like giving birth, to, I mean, it's just a huge feet because really the corporates and the creators I think sort of they keep you apart and actually to kind of you know create something like this has been you know to go into that kind of entrepreneurial side I, mean, I actually love being creative and I love business I think the whole thing is so exciting to me and kind of the whole 360 point of view on life and I think actually now more and more one sort of feeds the other and I love you know the whole digital the, you know the whole kind of digital thing and the sort of social media platforms and the way 
it's all just so exciting how you can sort of, I think you need to see things from a 360 point of view and how, I'm not just interested in me having, I mean, I have to say I'm quite lucky. Most of the things I do sell incredibly well and I have an amazing track record for that. Um, but, you know, it, I, I am interested in where are they selling, how are they selling, what is it, you know, it's, mm. it's, it's, it's exciting, it makes me feel like I've done a really great job. And it's, it's sort of refreshing now, I think, to hear a woman say, basically say, I'm really ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a brilliant thing to be yeah. ambitious, it's sort of become a bit of a dirty I know, word, I know what you mean, I know what you mean. Different. Makeup empowered me and changed my life. And it, there is something very emotional about what I do, and I don't think it would have success if it wasn't based in integrity and 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 true kind of me speaking to a woman to a woman or from from my heart and the fact is is that it had a huge effect on my life it changed my life i seriously hold my hands up and say i know i wouldn't have the life i have today i know i wouldn't have I'm not saying that, okay, but you definitely, I mean, we go back to that Project and Gumball research that you know so much about, they did at Harvard, where it's like the same woman with and without makeup, I trust her, I don't trust her, I fancy her, I don't fancy her, I pay her more, I take her out, it's like, sort of it's the same woman. But you know, I know that, you know that, because we know so much about beauty, but a lot of women, you know, 50% of women in this country don't engage with makeup, and I feel mm. so kind of frustrated and upset for them because I'm like oh my god just with a little bit of a couple of things just give me five minutes I could change your life yeah you know and I could empower you and make you feel you know it, it, because the fact is, is that, you know especially now in winter times we're all like tired gray exhausted whatever you know a little bit of gorgeous magic cream a little bit of kind of lovely blush a two, two, two minute color comedian and what I'm saying to him is like you don't need a skill set yeah you know yeah. and tell me your problem and I'll solve it for yeah. you and once you say to people look windscreen wiper they can do it but they just won't even give you that I'll, I'll give you one minute in a wing mirror of a car so you think okay I'm going to come up with this product and that's how I develop color comedians and it won't slide and I'm not going to retouch my makeup by the way all day long yeah and you're like okay color comedian lasts 14 so hours right. but you know what I mean but th yeah. this is what I was yeah. like you know when I was thinking of the brand I was very much thinking of like real women problems solutions how do I change their lives how do I do something that really is going to make a difference to them and make them look fabulous because it really changed my life and it really empowered me and I know through all this research that actually you can monetize you know your life you can definitely I think you can definitely get the man you want the dream you want the you know the job you want you can pay, pay more money I certainly know it works celebrities and models certainly know yeah. it works yeah. you know that's why they you know I get flown around the world doing what I do because otherwise if anyone could do it it would be like well you know just employ that you know but it's about that's why I wanted to create the brand because it was like, okay, it was about, you know, when I look at other people, arbiters of taste or tastemakers, it's like, I would want, what did I want from an amazing makeup artist? I would want an amazing makeup artist to look at me and say to me, it's always what I wanted as a little girl, to say to me, how can I maximize your beauty? How can I make you yeah. like the most beautiful version of Charlotte? Yeah. Or the most beautiful Sally. version of Sally, you know, with Sally's colour hair and Sally's colour eyes and Sally's cheek and Sally's face shape. How can I make Sally look the most supermodel gorgeous version of Sally? And trust me, I mean, Helena Rubenstein says it, there are no such thing as ugly women. There are I only agree. lazy ones. And that's what <laughs> she said. I love that quote. I know, you love that quote. It's like, but it's true. It's like, I don't believe that anyone goes, oh, but I don't have, you. everyone's gorgeous. And they, you know, it's just about, and makeup is our secret weapon. I think it's um, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, um, you're born pretty but beautiful is an equal opportunity. Yes. Adjective. Brilliant. It's totally Brilliant. correct. Totally correct. Totally correct. Totally correct. Because any Brilliant. woman can look beautiful, I think. Yeah, Everyone. I do. Exactly. And, you know, and, and you know, Helena Rubenstein herself, in fact, was not a desperately attractive Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl. But, you know, she would put the red lipstick on, put her hair back, put a hair piece in with a bum, you know, embellish herself in beautiful jewels, put the blush on, she knew how to do a bit of an eye. By the end of it, you know, great, and she wasn't slim or anything, but she kind of put fabulous outfits. She made the most of herself and she looked like this kind of extraordinary sort of doyenne, this sort of fabulous person that you think both became very attractive. So having spent so much mm. of your career making up Kate Moss, you've made up a million times, and the people we mentioned before, Helena Christensen, and all these really amazing models, has it been refreshing to you to suddenly be working lots with real women who might have, you know, 
board meetings oh, to attend, yeah. babies to take to the park, all of that stuff. Is it refreshing for you to be away from that kind of model time? Some of the time, you still do it, obviously, yeah. but, you know, to have that break. I mean, I think, you know, my whole thing is I, I love everything in life. I love a little bit of everything. Yeah. I'm not one of those people that I only want to be, you know, if someone said to me what would kind of be the, the idea of a great party, I don't want to just mix with one type of person. I want to mix with the whole world. And I think that... Um, you know, it, 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 I never stopped that because I always had my friends, you know, my friends are from all different walks of life. And, you know, I, I do love, you know, the, I worked on my counter for a couple of days because it just went so crazy and we had queues around the block and I yeah, was like, man. I can't leave this place unmanned. Yeah. I just, I was only meant to go in for a personal appearance and it just went so nuts. So, um, you know, it's literally like roping in every family member, get down here, I need help. <laughs> I swamped. Um, but, you know, it, it, it is wonderful. You know, it's wonderful when someone comes in, you know, whether it's with rosacea or they come in and they, they, they when I did it yesterday, I had a friend around here who's never worn makeup. She's a bit of a tomboy. She's gorgeous. She kind of could look like Pamela Anderson. But she sort of like doesn't really, you know, she just doesn't make most, doesn't wear a scrap of makeup. Bit of a scruffy mess. And she kept, you know, honest. But the, and I just got her and I said, darling, she went, and she literally, you know, and people are reduced to kind of tears. Because this is a woman that's like 43 and never knew that she could look like this. Never knew she had those eyes. Never knew she had those lips. Because she's got a mouth, but she would put lipstick on it. So whenever she would wear lipstick, she would make put it on so it made her mouth look smaller. Because she would never really... And I showed her pillow talk. And I put, no, actually I put iconic nude on and nude cape on her lips. And and it was the one I made up for Kate Moss, the rock chick actually I did on her. And I kind of did the rock chick eyes. And she just was like, oh my God. At my lips and they were they were visibly looked so much bigger and you know her eyes they're a little bit close together so I kind of really elongated I just elongated them a little bit with the rock chick and dragged it out and and put the kind of the, 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 the bedroom black eyeliner which is intensely back so her blue eyes just really popped out and the kind of uh, and all those colours the, the rock chick colours on the eyes really kind of you know morphed her eye colour and she just she she was like she started crying. You know, and it's that moment. It's amazing the effect it can have. Yeah, but she's like, I never knew, I, I, this is what, and she works with film stars. But she never knew that that could ever be her. She'd just forgotten about herself. Yeah. And I think women do this a lot, though. I think women are so focused on looking after their kids, trying to earn money, looking after their husbands, maintaining their friendships, yeah. all of that, that they lose sight of themselves, especially when they get older. Their plate is so full yeah. that they go to the bottom of the list of priorities. Totally. Or, you know, or they get stuck in a rut where literally it's like they're just going to the same couple of products, but at least they're putting on makeup. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah.